Sound check, sound check, one, two. Okay, let's go. Get my seat right. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Saf from Bite Size Madrasa. So, we're going to start learning the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this channel. So, keep following. Let's go straight into it. So, before we study any type of science, we uh, learn the benefits of actually studying that science. So, in this sense, the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let's begin with its definition. So essentially, Sirah means the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when we study Sirah, we look at uh, three things mainly: his circumstances, his environment, and his conditions. Uh, also, there's another uh, uh, aspect of his Sirah that we study, which is called Shama'il. So his character, uh, the way he was. Uh, uh, with people, so his disposition with people, and as well as that, his being in the sense of his physical appearance. So, how long was his hair? You know, how tall he was, uh, what was the color of his skin, uh, and all of these things. And it's essential that we know these things about the Prophet, peace be upon him, because simply because we might know as the descriptions of singers and footballers and actors and entrepreneurs so we might know how these people look like but unfortunately we might not know how the prophet peace be upon him looks like as muslims and as a muslim that is a serious problem so and if you truly believe that if you truly believe that the old salvation is to say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah why would you not want to know about muhammad rasulullah one thing that's important to know about studying the life of the prophet peace be upon him is that Remember, studying the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is not like studying a hadith. And that's separate, and that's what I'm saying. So that's considered as a separate subject, and that's called a hadith. And a hadith is used for legislation purposes. So a hadith will be used for law. So people, you know, scholars, qualified scholars will, will study a hadith, and they would uh, use those ahadiths to establish law. It's not the same for Sira. Ultimate point is you can't use Sira to, to establish law. The purpose of teaching the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is that people increase in the love for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and increase in the knowledge for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and have a, a brief and basic uh, understanding of what occurrences took place in his life. Now, does that allow you to you know, take what I say and use it as law? No, of course not. So that's important to know. In a nutshell, life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you study to increase your knowledge of his life as a biography. You can't take out uh, rulings from it, from it and, you know, for legislation purposes because that's a dull, different uh, kettle of fish. And the Sahaba recognized the importance of uh, you know, preserving the knowledge and the things that took place in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. There is definitely reward in studying the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It is an act of ibadah. So a person is in a state of worship while he's, while he's uh, studying the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. It's not just simply like I'm mentioning things like biography and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's important to know that it is an act of worship to study the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Inshallah, we hope to seek a reward uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy in the hereafter to spending the time in teaching and learning the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, and it definitely does nourish the heart. Uh, you know, it increases a person's spirituality, increases the love of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and increases the knowledge of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So it is not not just simply seen as just a subject to study it is a great subject to study study but it has its limitations uh, in terms of legislation uh, i mean now sira is actually preserved in almost every single language allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa rafa'na laka dhikrak to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have raised your remembrance وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ That we have raised your remembrance. We have raised your remembrance for you, O beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is Muhammad, which means actually the one who is praised. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is praised every single moment of the day. Every single moment of the day, there are always human beings who are praising the Prophet, peace be upon him, in every single moment of the day. 
we might not be praising the Prophet peace be upon him every single moment of the day, but there are, if there's no moment that passes by during the day that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not praised, and that lives <laughs> to his name, the praised one. So Subhanallah, I mean, just in in his name there's miracles, just in his name. Wow. And another one of the benefits of studying the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is that it will bless you with the opportunity of imitating the Prophet, peace be upon him. And it's actually interesting to know that children, you know, if you see children behave, they are imitative by their nature. They, you know, human beings are imitating beings. We always imitate something, the way we dress, the way we talk. My accent, I look, my accent is beautiful and because it's from Oldham. That's why it's amazing, and and uh, and that's the thing. When we, uh, if you, if we, if I changed environments, if I stayed amongst different people, I will eventually start imitating their the way of speaking. I will start imitating the way they dress. I will start imitating even the way they look. You know, they say, you know, uh, even if if you spend so much time with somebody, you actually start even looking like them. Which is amazing because you will come to study that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Medina, but the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca, sorry, when he entered into Medina, he entered with Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu an, and Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu an, who is uh, when you describe him, he's described very different to looking like the Prophet ﷺ. He actually started looking like the Prophet ﷺ, where people must mistook Abu Bakr Siddiq to be the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they started meeting him the people who because there were people from Medina who never met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before and that's the thing when you truly love somebody and truly learn about someone you will start imitating them and here when we study the life of the Prophet peace be upon him we hope that we start imitating the life the Prophet peace be upon him if that's our nature and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran that he has sent to the best example to imitate. That's why we, we study the life of the Prophet, because the more you study about him, then you will start imitating him. You will start imitating what, you, what he eats, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will start imitating the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he smiles. We, we hope to be like that. So inshallah, we make that niyyah, we make that intention of not just studying the life of the Prophet to be a critic. If people have diseases of their hearts, that's their problem. That's the issue. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to be criticized at the time uh, uh, by his enemies. And they used to call the Prophet Muhammad Muzammam. Muzammam. They used to change the name of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, look at, look at these people. They're trying to, they are criticizing someone named Muzammam. And my name is Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, he wouldn't even allow something like that to affect him. The point is, whoever people criticize, if people want to study the life of the Prophet to criticize him or to try to find negative points, they only find those points not because they're present with the Prophet, peace be upon him, it's because they see a reflection of themselves. That's my intention of teaching it, and that's closeness to Allah and His Rasul. And if you want other than that, then you want other than that. That's up to you. You can still listen, and that's fine. But you know, uh, uh, I'm not going to be here trying to justify things of the Prophet, peace be upon him, because he doesn't need to be justified. I'm sorry. Sorry about the run. The Prophet has went through so many problems that you will find yourself in his life. And that's the amazing thing about his life. is It's a miraculous life in the sense that you will find yourself in his life. And it won't be a coincidence that the chapter you're on of the life of the Prophet will be relative to a certain tribulations that you're probably going through in your own life and that's about it really that's a good that's a, just a brief introduction on studying the life of the prophet peace be upon him why we study uh you know the life of the prophet what's the benefits what do we hope to achieve from this that's all for today so see you on the next show